Good morning. Welcome to Driving Force Radio. Today we have an exciting show. We are talking to the founders and management team from the VX, a central hub for women's ideas. The VX transforms the mindset of women so that they can realize their potential and recognize the roles they must play in their communities and our society. The role of the VX is to convene, collaborate, and connect their members. They are piloted in the VX in Colorado with an aggressive growth plan across the U.S. and the world. In each new market, they will lead with the same premise. Performance in businesses and communities suffers due to the underrepresentation of women and the lack of diverse perspective that they bring. Our first guest is Pam Jeffords, the CEO of the VX. Pam is the co-founder and partner of VIA Management Consulting and is an experienced entrepreneur in the Denver community. She has a successful history as an entrepreneur and actively serves her community as the co-chair of the Women's Leadership Council at the Mile High United Way. Welcome to the show, Pam. Thank you very much. You know, I love the concept of the VX and I'm so excited to see it, it take off and, and launch. But for the listener, tell them what is the VX and, and what's the VX going to do? Well, VX is simply a hub for women's ideas. Um, we sat around uh, a few years ago and realized that there was a uh, missing link for women to come together and, and have good ideas and then actually execute those ideas. Mm -hmm. So where did the idea for the VX come from? Mm -hmm. So it was um, a, like most good ideas. It came from a very small group of passionate women that uh, we had been together in various areas before in philanthropy and women's leadership, uh, mentoring, some policy and education. And we got together and said, you know, there's so many things that are keeping us up at night. Where is there a platform that we can go to to share those ideas with others and then collaborate and build upon them to make something bigger? And so we really spent a good bit of time looking around Denver. We looked around the U.S. We looked around the world and said, is there something that exists that we could jump on board? And we realized there wasn't. And so the virtual exchange is a play off of exchanging ideas among women, among organizations that support women. And the virtual piece was we knew that technology was what was going to enable us to really take this worldwide. So for so many people, you know, the technology piece, so many women, is that a great play for them mm -hmm. or is that, is it sort of something else they're going to have to learn? That's a great question. And what we found is that women appreciate technology and we appreciate what technology will allow us to do in the global economy. We still want to get together. We still want to have a cup of coffee. And so the virtual exchange is both live. There is both personal interaction uh, with groups one-on-one -on -one, but then we also know that when we start to connect with other countries and around the globe, we're going to need that technology. Um, it's more like a LinkedIn, Facebook, um, Twitter, social media, all wrapped in one, the way women want to see it. Gotcha. So Pam, you've said many times that women really want the ability to collaborate and, and mm -hmm. really come together, rally around these big, hairy, audacious problems that are out there in our communities. Why do you think this is true? You know, I'm, I'm from the South and, you know, I believe in stereotypes and I am the stereotype, stereotypical female from Louisiana. I will fry it if I can fry it. I won't wear shoes if I don't need to. <laughs> and I think if I, if I was to stereotype women, and there's not all women, but if I was to stereotype women, we rally in a crisis. When there's a crisis situation, the alarms go off, the internal feelings, we don't sleep at night, we want to go solve problems. And what we found is that um, there's a lot of problems facing our community and our world today, and there's no avenue which women can come together and really rally. And so that's what the VX will provide, is when women, you know, and I can say pissed off moms get together, and they want the ability to go and tackle these audacious goals, audacious problems, then the VX will allow them to do that. And what it'll first do, though, is we know that we have to get the women together. Sure. So that's step one. And so if you look at the virtual exchange, the VX, it's a three-step process. The first is, let's get these women together and let's convene them. And then we know, we believe in whether you call it synergy, whether you call it emergence, whatever word you use to say the power of a collective group is greater than any individual one of us. And when we take that group together and then we create this, um, this powerful network of women that believe in themselves and believe in their power, we're going to grow. And then we're going to go tackle together these problems that are facing the community. And that's audacious. And we know it. And we're excited. And we're ready for it. So historically, give me an example of something historic that, that people can 
understand that are listening, what are one of those problems? What are some of those problems? Well, education is, is one at top of mind right now, especially in the state of Colorado. Um, our economy, you know, there's a, there's a lot of people that suggest right now that if women would have been at the table at the, in the boardroom and in the financial table, then we wouldn't have had the economic crisis that we had. Um, we're not here to debate whether that's true or not, but if there's a potential out there that says that if women are at the table and we could solve the education crisis and we could have prevented the financial, um, the economy from going through its turbulent nature, we have to at least try and we have to step up to the table. Well, you know, I, I couldn't agree more, Pam, and, and I love that the VX is coming online, mm -hmm. but I'm sure there are listeners out there saying, oh, this is just that women's lib thing, women's movement deal. Mm -hmm. Is this a women's rights movement, Pam? Yeah, and it, 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 it isn't, and that's a great question, and I tell people that all the time. I believe that there have been a lot of wonderful women ahead of us that have paved a fabulous path for us, and the women's rights issues have been tackled. This is about changing the mindset of women, because women are self-selecting out of the workplace, they're self-selecting out of the boardroom, and they're saying, you know what, I'm absolutely okay sitting here and doing, making good money, uh, you know, raising my family, um, participating in society, and what we're saying is we need to be at that table at that highest level, and whether that's your boardroom table, that's your dinner table, that's the political table, the table can be whatever table it is, and what we're saying now is to women is we, have, in the last 20 years, we still haven't made any progress in being at the table. And we believe it's because women are self-selecting out of taking those leadership positions. Yeah, I was doing some research for the show and I, and I saw that over the last five years, I think the boardroom participation had only moved mm -hmm. by a point and a half maybe yes. over the last five years. And I thought that was so interesting seeing mm -hmm. as, you know, women really make up such a large portion of, of the, the employment sector. Mm -hmm. sector. Okay. Absolutely, and we, what we're seeing is that women still make up over 50% of the workforce. And we still make up, in Fortune 1000 companies, we still make up over 50% of the first line managers. So what we're seeing by that, what we're um, assuming by that is women aren't leaving the workforce. They're still staying in the workforce. But they're deciding at that manager director level, okay, I'm good, I've had enough, I'm gonna move over here. And there's some women, and this is just an anecdotal comments, we hear them saying, well, I'm thinking about having a child in five years. So I'm going to go take this path over here. And we say five years, you know, that's a, you're self-selecting out when you're thinking about getting married and having kids five years from now. And so we're seeing that a lot in our young girls. So we're trying to tell them, you know, uh, I have a story from when I was in cross country. My coach used to say, nobody's expecting it, Pam, sprint up the hill. As soon as you get to a hill, man, just sprint up it. And then you can kind of coast along once you get up at the top. So what we're telling these women is, don't start slowing down five years before you think you might want to have kids. Sprint up the hill. Get up to that VP level, you know, at 24, 25. It's doable, right? Right. Sprint up the hill, get up there, and then if you have to, you know, uh, when you have kids, if you want to take a, a less demanding role, you can. And then when your kids are back in school and you want to sprint back up that hill again, you're in a better position to do it. Absolutely. And so that's really what we're saying is that ment shifting that mentality to say, um, it's if the economy was fine, if our education system was wonderful, we would not have the virtual exchange. The VX is not is existing so that we can go solve these problems and bring women together to do that. Well, and and. and for me, I guess, uh, you know, I'm a mother of two, mm -hmm. um, and and changing that mindset of, of women to say, oh, you know, five years from now is a long ways away. I guess my question is, and, and maybe you can help me because maybe I'm stereotyping mm -hmm. at this point, but why on earth do you have to slow down anyways mm -hmm. five years out? Why do you have to slow down, period? Mm -hmm. I mean, kids and family and husbands and lives move on whether you're in or out so mm -hmm. is there a reason that we even need to be well why why should we even be having this conversation how do we get there i get <laughs> you know six weeks of maternity leave but other than that why are we slowing Keep down going. and i think what we're saying is we're open to everyone's um needs and while my need might not be to slow down right. and and having i've had four children 
and during the, I've had them in my uh, late 20s and my 30s and, and late 30s, and my needs were different every time. Yep. And so sometimes I was, I'm ready to go back to work, other times I need a year. And so what we're respecting is, it's gonna be each individual person. So honoring that, that role of a woman in her personal as well as her professional life. Absolutely. I, I love yeah. that. Yeah. So Pam, what does success look like for the VX as you guys get ready to launch and go out there? And the, the VX for us is when right now women are love the concept and they love the idea and everyone is very excited about it. For us, success, success is when we actually do get together and we start to move the needle. And women do start to get on public for-profit boards and publicly traded boards and they start stepping up in the, in the uh, education system and, um, and we start seeing an impact and we see women actually um, realizing that, uh, that they do need to be at the table and having that mindset change. And, and what do you see as the biggest challenge as you guys get the VX going? It's, it's getting those women to come together. Well, they're coming together. It's to get them to actually go. And right now we're getting the thumbs up and we're getting everybody, wow, this is amazing. And so we'll be very honest, you know, actually doing it, I think it's, it's gonna be interesting. Yeah. That's, that's so awesome, Pam. When we come back, we will have more with the VX. Deb Smith will join us to discuss the 20 years of women's initiatives. Welcome back to Driving Force Radio, where we challenge leaders across all sectors to be a driving force in their communities. Now we are honored to have Deb Smith, the CFO of the VX, join us for the show. Deb served as a tax partner with Deloitte for over 10 years and retired after 24 years of providing business advisory services to multinational corporations specializing in corporate taxation and accounting for income taxes. She's a board member of the Mile High United Way and the co-chair of the Women's Leadership Council. She also is on Serve Colorado, the Governor's Commission on Community Service. Welcome to the show, Deb. Good morning. Deb, you know, there have been so many women's initiatives over the last 20 years. Why is the VX so important now? Well, you know, um, every major corporation has had a women's initiative from, you know, last 10 years to 20 years. And you've seen uh, many women's organizations, what we call uh, often affinity groups, um, that are supporting women in their development, but yet we really have not moved the needle. Um, there's been some success. I mean, when, I, uh, when the Women's Initiative was launched at Deloitte, we were over 50% of the new hires, but yet we represented 6% of the partner group. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, we're in the 20%, but clearly we have not yet met our representative share. And um, as Pam, I think, had talked about a little bit earlier, is women are self-selecting out. They're saying, you know, it's not worth it. I don't see women that look like me, women that are making it work. And so um, there's always a phrase, are we done yet? No, we're absolutely not done yet. And now we need to do it differently. And that's what the VX is about. So, so Obviously, we're not done yet, but there's a lot of support out there. And the question is that's really out there, that one that's just sort of hanging out there, is why do we remain so underrepresented? Well, I think um, we talked about self-selecting out. Right. But, you know, another issue is that so many of these organizations are operating in a silo. And if you think about it, women work well in groups and in teams. And we have not yet harnessed the collective power of women. And so that's really what the VX is looking at doing is putting a challenge to collaborate, to say there's more than one organization that's doing, um, you know, getting women on boards, but how are we harnessing all of that power in one place to really try and move the needle? So, you know, it sounds like women lead very differently. You know, it's it's more team-based approach. It's, you know, all kinds of different ways. But talk specifically about how women lead differently than men do. So um, there's uh, clearly some differences. And, and in fact, Deloitte did a study because so many of our partners, many which are male, were um, selling to women and trying to help them be more successful in that sale. And you know, and a couple key things, men operate on a hierarchy. 
you know, you just need to know who my key top person is and then I'll bring the right people and the team and you should be okay. Well, that absolutely does not work for women. Women want you to embrace their team. They want to know that, the, that you recognize their team and they're more concerned about the team's success than they are about their own success. Uh, another key thing that we know is that women have to be about 80% confident to raise their hand and say, I think I can do this position. A man only needs to be about 20% confident. And so the, wow. the reality is, is you can be putting a position out there, but you may not be even getting the most qualified candidates because your women you know, that are need to be 80% confident, maybe much more prepared than a man who's 20% confident. And so part of it is about understanding that we may have to be tapping women on the shoulder. And so this comes to that self-selecting out, tapping women to say, you need to think about this. You need to consider taking on this role. What do you need to get comfortable? How can we help you? Yeah, absolutely. Way. And Pam, I see you over there shaking your head mm -hmm. and, and really getting excited about this. Your thoughts on that? You know, I, and I, I think you know everything Deb is saying is true. Is that you know we, for 20 years we've tried to crack this nut and we haven't. And so the VX is going to take a little bit of a different approach. We're going to go to women and say, you know, have you thought about this? Have you thought about taking on this for-profit board? Have you thought about taking this promotion? And 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 then also educating them. I think when we tell women, did you know that you have to statistically, you have to be 80% sure before you do something, and men only have to be 20. Their faces, they, I mean, it's just, wow, really? And then they start, their mind starts going, and they start kind of laughing and going, yeah, that's, you know, you watch men, and, and no offense to men, I love it, right? They, they can spell the word, and they're raising their hands, and I can absolutely <laughs> do that, right? <laughs> women were going, oh, I don't know. And then what we also know is, not only do women have to be 80% sure before they take the leap, they have to probably be about 90% sure before they recommend another woman. And so men, That's so true, absolutely. that is true. And so men, you know, they, they network well, they like, oh, you know, John, absolutely, you should hire John, John should be in that role. They may have a side conversation with John saying, hey, dude, you've got to do this right, right? Don't, don't make me look bad. Women were like, mm, I don't know, I've only known Deb for 10 years and I'm not sure if I'm going to recommend Deb for that role. Yeah. So it's, and when you have those conversations with the women and, and educate them and start having, they, you can see the, again, that perception and those lights turn on where women, it's changing their mindset. It's saying, you yeah. absolutely are qualified for this role. Let's go get that together. Well, and Deb, I want to come back <laughs> to something too that you had said earlier, you know, that it's about leadership. It's, it's historically been about providing this mentoring. Give me your thoughts on that. How is the, the VX going to do that a little differently or are you providing that at all? No, absolutely. Mentoring, and, and I guess we'd use even a different uh, word, sure. sponsorship. And so it's really about um, helping you as a woman um, achieve what you need to achieve. Not just telling you what you need to do, but actually actively connecting you with the right people, putting you in a place to be um, to be successful. And in fact, um, when it, if you think about m the differences in men and women, Women always focus on what they didn't do right as opposed to all that they did do right. And, um, and so in our collaborative environment, having women promote other women because you can pr you're more comfortable promoting someone else than promoting yourself. And that's another key piece of how we sponsor is, is being able to put that woman forth, but to share the accomplishments because um, there was a stat we had where, you know, if you had um, five projects and all went, uh, four out of the five went great, and you had a man and a woman talking about them, the woman would tell you about the one and why all the reasons it, you know, could have gone better, but it didn't, whereas the man will just tell you, oh, forget about that one, that was an outlier, you know, here's all the wonderful things I do. So it's really about embracing how we lead as women and using that to our strength. I, I love that. Deb, thank you for being here. In the next segment, we're going to learn more about women's leadership and the VX with Michelle Campbell. Don't go anywhere. Today we are talking with the executive team of the VX, a Denver-based organization that is convening 
collaborating, and connecting its members locally and around the globe. They exist to support women's leadership at all levels and are moving forward with a plan to bring representation in business and communities. Joining us now is Michelle Campbell, the COO of the VX. Michelle is the managing partner of MD Campbell and Associates, a 20-year-old consulting firm that provides project management and organization development services. Michelle's life passion is volunteering with women's leadership organizations such as the Central Exchange in Kansas City, the Junior League of America, the Mile High United Way Women's Leadership Council, and the National Society of Black Engineers. Michelle, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Um, you know, Michelle, when I think about leadership, even women's leadership, you mm -hmm. think corporate America, mm -hmm. you think the Fortune 500, mm -hmm. but the VX has a little bit of entrepreneur mm -hmm. in it. Why an entrepreneur? Yeah, great question. And, you know, I started my life, at, um, as most women in corporate America, um, spent 10 years with, um, with a com company. And I, I was going back to the, the opting out piece, and I think that was part of my decision to really say, there's not women at the top of this engineering firm, of this organization that looks like me. So how do I begin to opt out and really create room and energy for not only my own ideas, but also to bring other women along? Um, and so that's what a little bit of the VX, where we're, we're saying, you know, we're not opting out, but we're creating, we're leveraging our talents, our resources, so that we can begin to, to find a voice in leadership through entrepreneurship um, that represents um, and is parallel to Yes Corporations, but really goes beyond that, where we are really representing leadership at any table that we sit at. That, that's such an interesting take on it. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, the question is then, is the VX a for-profit organization or a non-profit organization? Because I, as I did some research mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. show, um, I, I saw one very high, high level woman um, say something to the effect that, that women need meaning in their life and feel that the only way they can find meaning is in a non-profit. Yeah. And not necessarily, in my opinion, where you have to find meaning. So nonprofit, yeah. for profit, what you does know, the VX look like? The VX is for profit and we thought about that um, and really thought about again this is the opportunity for women to create leverage and to create um, visibility in terms of the boardrooms, in terms of positions of influence. And we found that yes, you could do that absolutely in a not for profit, but I think that in terms of economic development and sustainability within our lives and the impact that we have in that and what we can do from a financial standpoint, um, we really opted to say this is absolutely going to be a for-profit. But the, the unique thing is that we're really bringing together not-for-profits around women's affinity groups that are ideally not-for-profits that begin to come together to convene so they can really say, you know what, we can leverage our ideals and thoughts as not-for-profits, but really leverage our momentum to move forces as a for-profit. So that idea that um, we don't have to operate as women in a for-profit manner, that we are not for, we are a for-profit manner, but we are um, an, an instigators and, and movers and, and amplifies the fact that we really want to be part of the, the, the stock exchange. We want to be part of this economic development. And, and you know, that's so interesting to hear because I think people are sitting out there thinking, you know, Okay, working with nonprofits, creating a for-profit, mm -hmm. such an interesting dynamic, very different than anything you've heard. Absolutely, uh, really go on. And, and you know, and as women, that we are not afraid to really say, you know, what the dollar matters, um, our visibility matters, our leverage matters. Being at the table and making sure that we not only have the economic force and the vitality to do that, but also the the almost the right to say we're going to make sure that other women are there and we can sponsor them and sponsor them with a dollar. Well, and I, I know as part of the VX that you guys are, are, are out there saying, you know, this perception mm -hmm. of, of female leaders, of, of women leaders mm -hmm. really needs to change, really needs to be stepped up a little bit and along with access to networks and the boardroom and all of those things. Give me your thoughts on that, Michelle. Yeah, you know, and I don't think that, I think that women um, want to be present. We don't know how to be present. We have not really been defined as when you say to show up, what does that mean? Does it mean to sit on the chair outside of the table or to sit at the table? And many times um, we are, we're asking women to just don't come in and, and be the ones that are sitting outside the table, but be there and be part of the presentation, be part of the conversation. So what it looks like to me is really going back and asking women to really be willing to take a risk. Take a risk not only with their own ideas, 
but also really where their energy is moving them. And that is to be a force in their community. Um, and, and really to realize that not only will you be alone, you won't be alone, but you'll be there with a synergy of women like the VX to support you. And to make sure that you are and your voice is heard when no matter what arena you, you, you want to stand on, be it education or careers or um, finances, whatever it is, we're there and we can absolutely tap you into someone if we don't have the ideas, but we really have uh, a member of, of the VX could help you mobilize that idea. Well, and I, I want to clarify this as, as we have this conversation, you know, as we've had the last segments mm -hmm. with Pam and with Deb, you know, we've talked about what the VX is and what it does, but I think there's a perception oftentimes, mm -hmm. we were talking in the last segment about, you know, men only need to be 20% sure Absolutely. about things. Women are 80%, mm -hmm. I think it was. Mm -hmm. And yet, I think when you see a woman in the boardroom, you see a confident woman walking mm -hmm. down the street or showing up mm -hmm. at the podium, mm -hmm. that oftentimes there's sort of a negative connotation mm -hmm. that goes with her mm -hmm. style and or set, if you will. Yes. Um, can you address yes. that a little bit and what the you know, VXs sees with that? The reality is I just had a conversation yesterday with a, a gentleman that said, um, you know, I think this woman could really be lead this institution. She's awfully pushy, don't you think? So it's, again, it's that stereotype as women, why can we not just be a sure versus just right. pushy? Um, and that absolutely she has the, not only the mind, but, but the spirit and the energy to corral. And yes, she is, she's excited and she's an amplifier, right? She wants to amplify her forces around her. So is it pushy or is it simply being self-assured? Yeah. 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 And that's what the VX is, is there to do, to vitalize women, to make sure that we know that we're simply self-assured. Deb, I saw you over there smiling about that. What, yeah. what are your thoughts? Well, you know, having grown up in corporate America, it, it's um, often a challenge of mm -hmm. trying to be the right mm -hmm. role model. Mm -hmm. And, you know, very often mm -hmm. you looked up and those weren't women that you wanted to be like mm -hmm. because they had mm -hmm. a reputation, but it's unfortunate mm -hmm. because um, you know, you can be assertive, but you're labeled aggressive or... And acerbic. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. the, the terminology that comes mm -hmm. because it's linked to a woman is very different when it's the same action that is praised when it's um, done by a man. Absolutely. And, mm -hmm. and, and part of that is something we have to change within society because that's, that's inhibiting women to really reach their full potential. Well, and Pam, I see you over there nodding now. What are your thoughts? Well, and I think a lot of it is, is again, it's transforming the way we're thinking, both the men and the, the women. And, mm -hmm. and I, I was laughing because, um, you know, we've been working together now for, mm -hmm. for a couple of years. And so I know um, when to kind of let Michelle take something and when to let Dad. And I know we all came to this with certain, um, mm -hmm. something that was keeping us up. And it was very different mm -hmm. for all three of us, right? And so one of the things Michelle I, I, is always reminding me of is these subtleties that about um, why you know uh, people think that women need help. And someone the other day was very, very um, well intentioned, and they made the comment. So I think if I'm hearing what you want to do, the VX mm -hmm. wants to prepare women for to be on boards. Mm -hmm. And I just was quiet. I sat <laughs> back and I was like, I'm going to let Michelle take this one. And she went, she goes, oh, you mean like they prepare men to be on boards? And he went, ooh, you're right. Yeah. She said, we don't need yeah. to prepare women to be on boards. They're prepared to be on boards. Nobody gives a class with to men on how do you be, be a board member, mm -hmm. right? You mm -hmm. certainly, there's organizations that support you uh, to be on for-profit boards. But, but I yeah. knew that it was just yeah. that slight word that said, oh, so you're gonna prepare women to be on boards. Yeah. It's, yeah. We're not, women are, are equally qualified right now. It's just that the mindset that says, go, go, go mm -hmm. for it. And, uh, and we'll help you get there, mm -hmm. meaning we'll align you. There's organizations who want women on boards. Yeah. There's mm -hmm. women who want to be on boards. Mm -hmm. We're going to make that exchange. We're mm -hmm. going to be that connector and that hub. But it's not about women preparing. And so it's these, these tiny little slight words, mm -hmm. but that's, that word, mm -hmm. it's, such, it's so yeah. significant. Right. And I think that that is really, that describes the VX. It, we're not trying to change the mindset of men. We're really transforming women to change their mindset of how they sit, literally sit at the table. And so I think that's really describes the VX in terms of what our role is, 
um, as, as the co-founders. Michelle, that was so insightful. Um, if listeners want to learn mm -hmm. more about the VX and how to get involved, where do they need to go? Yes, our website is um, www.thevx.com. Michelle, thank you. Absolutely. Um, and if you want to learn more about Icosa Magazine, visit theicosamagazine.com. We'll be right back. We're back with Pam Jeffords, Deb Smith, and Michelle Campbell, the executive team of the VX, to learn more about the strategy, the path, if you will, that the VX is embarking on. And while there are so many things that affect women in today's professional world, the VX is really trying to address women and careers. Welcome back to the show, ladies. Thank you. Thank you. you know, before we start this conversation about mm -hmm. the path you're going to take, I have to ask, as we were in break, how did you guys all come together? Because you all have very different mm -hmm. backgrounds. Michelle, mm -hmm. your take. You know, um, it's interesting because we do each have very different backgrounds. Um, but Pam and I met um, literally on the on the playground of our kids' school. Our kids go to school together, and our sons um, became very fast friends, and and that really put us in alignment to and and then began to talk and say, you know what, we're not only women and mothers, but we really have all these other things in common. Um, so immediately that relationship and respect for each other and friendship flourished. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, a common thread we also mm -hmm. have is our mm -hmm. um, love for philanthropy. And mm -hmm. so we all serve on the uh, Women's Leadership Council mm -hmm. uh, for Mile High United Way. And I think there was a passion with regard to philanthropy, but also being all um, women in different um, areas of uh, the working world, a passion for women and women's advancement. Mm -hmm. And I think what uh, bonded us together to go after the VX was our, um, I think it's tenacity. Mm -hmm. we, we, we weren't mm -hmm. scared. And, uh, and I think uh, somebody looked at us the, you know, one time and said, wow, when you guys say you're going to bring the VX worldwide, there's not a doubt in my mind that you will. And I think that's mm -hmm. the other thing is that we, we lack a you know, fear that a lot of people have. Yeah. So maybe it was, uh, <laughs> yes, we that's like to sit true. around and, and we love talking about our children. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, we know each other's children very well. They've hung, our kids very well, they hang out together. And so we're parents. Um, mm -hmm. We love talking about um, our different uh, faiths. We love talking about the problems facing our society. Uh, but at the end of the day, we all had the same common. Mm -hmm. we, we're going to go do this, mm -hmm. and there there was never doubt, and uh, and so I think that's what why we ended up saying mm -hmm. we're going to form a company mm -hmm. and and we're going to take this globally. Mm -hmm. Well, and and Pam, I think you said it earlier that part of the foundation of the VX was really based on this: what was keeping you guys up at night? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I have to ask Pam, what was the thing that was keeping you up at night? It, you know, two years ago in that moment, it was education. Mm -hmm. um, you know, as Michelle said, we, um, we met on the playground and, and we're both privileged enough to mm -hmm. send our kids to Catholic schools um, in town and, um, and, and so Waiting for Superman mm -hmm. came, up, mm -hmm. came out. Yeah. And, and it was this wake up call to moms, you know? And what we saw was this passion, stay at home moms, working moms, entrepreneurs, it didn't matter, grandmothers, aunts, no, somebody who didn't have children. Mm -hmm. We, so what we did was we, we saw these community conversations happening around um, Waiting for Superman and just the, the education crisis. And we saw people leaving um, screenings of the movie just so sad, mad, mm -hmm. tears, anger. The emotions were rampant. And then at the end, it kind of went fizzled because there was no, no yeah. platform for women. Right. And somebody said to me, uh, Pam, where are the pissed off moms? We're, go, rally, that's what you do, we rally. And, and so we sat together and we went, right. Mm -hmm. you, they're right. And, it was a, mm -hmm. and we, you know, we did a lot of searching, mm -hmm. to, be, to be honest, to find an organization that would take this on. And we right. were ready to say, you have our, our time, our passion, Absolutely. our money, we will be behind you. And what we found was, while there are similar organizations that group together women's um, affinity groups that maybe go after boards or go after um, philanthropy or go after mentoring, there was no organization that simply went after anything. 
get their women wanted. Mm -hmm. I love that. So Deb, what, was, what yeah. kept you up at night? Was it education as well? It is, um, particularly when you've had the privilege of having your kids have a great education, and then we've done some nonprofit work with inner city mm -hmm. kids, and, and it, we're just failing, and we're failing even if you take the business sense, is because we need great educated students. We need a great workforce mm -hmm. in order to be successful. Mm -hmm. And Mine Michelle. was really um, access, creating access for um, myself and my peers and women. Um, and that, because without access, um, you can really have, you know, the education is absolutely the foundation, right? Yeah. Having the finances, right? Having the economic means to mm -hmm. do that. And, and with that came the access, accessing um, women to opportunities to flourish. And that is, again, the foundation of the VX, where we, not, we won't just sponsor or, or we won't just mentor, but we will sponsor women into opportunities to create access for leadership. Well, ladies, when we come back, we're going to be talking more about mm -hmm. the path that you're on, where you're going, and what's making you unique. You guys are amazing leaders. You are listening to Driving Force Radio with ICOSA. We're back with the executive team of the VX. In, in this segment, we're going to be talking a lot about the unique value add factors that the VX is going mm -hmm. to be bringing to women all across our state, our region, our nation, and our world. And Pam, I want to come back to you mm -hmm. with the question about why choose careers first mm -hmm. to and, address. And that's a great question. So as, as Michelle pointed out, we are a for-profit organization. And uh, we're business. We're used to running businesses, very large PLs, and so we know we need to give our members something immediately, so that they'll keep coming back to the VX and see a value. So our ultimate goal is that our members go tackle audacious goals that are affecting the community. But our first step is to give the members themselves something back. So we um, started with 50 founding members, and we asked them, "What is the main thing that's that's keep that's you're struggling with right now and they all said careers and sponsorship and boards and um, all the things that go along with the career so we started there and then our hope is that in the next year we'll have more platforms in which to off have service offerings so the stay-at-home mom you know we had a request to say you know what is the secret sauce to having a highly educated child so our goal is to have multiple mm -hmm. platforms the first is careers for our founding members well and and Deb I think there are some interesting metrics that you guys have sort of put forth for the VX about the success factors, if you will, that you hope to accomplish. Can you address some of those? Yeah, um, a key thing we'll be looking at is trying to uh, or identifying 20 most influential positions of which we want to see a woman in, say, five years. And, and then it goes to sponsorship and how are we, you know, engaging those women. Um, you know, we go back to that needing to be 80 percent confident. What what do we need to give them to help move them to be positioned to take on that role? And then it's also engaging the organizations where those positions are and saying, hey, we want you to be on board with this as well. And so it's, it's really a, um, it gives us a very concise call to action of which we can deliver and I think we'll then demonstrate the value in the, uh, mm -hmm. to the VX. For, so for Michelle, VX. Talk about the uniqueness of the VX. Why yeah. is it unique and, and how many women do we need? Is it 50 founding members or is it hundreds, thousands? What does it look like? Yeah, and, and I think that's a great question. You know, really, what is it? What's the number? And since we're launching here in Colorado, we will have 150 founding women. Um, but with that, Jan, it will be international. Um, last year I had the great fortune of having a, a young woman in our office and she's from Europe and I was sharing with her about the VX and she said, is there any way that I can join the VX? Um, she's now working in India and she said, I'm working with women across the world, Michelle, that really need this access. They need to hear what other women are thinking back in Colorado. In addition to that, she said to me, which again goes back to the access, she said, when I come back to work for a corporation in Kansas City or in Colorado or in Nebraska or in Iowa, wherever it is in, in North America, she said, the VX will provide that access for me. That's what the VX does. It's unique because it really convenes, collaborates, and, and connects women, not only here in Colorado, but across the world. 
I, I love that. So when does the movement begin? It begins now. It begins now. We launched November 30th of last year and we are we're moving forward. We're making sure we're getting our voice and message out, but really again, making sure that women understand their stake, their interest, and the, the fact that we really need them at the table. Well, obviously you guys have a passion for this and we so appreciate that. We need it right now. We have to go to break, but we urge you to stay tuned to learn more about how you can become involved with the VX. Over the past hour, we have explored the power, passion, and collaborative nature of the women at the VX. It is an organization that is truly making strides for women all across our state. From the boardroom to the classroom, from the living room to the Capitol, we know that women really have a powerful voice. Deb Smith, the CFO of the VX, is, is here to talk about how um, the organization is recruiting new members and how women all over the area can become involved. Glad to have you back, Deb. So Deb, what types of memberships are available for, for women out there mm -hmm. that are listening? So we talked about the founding membership and those are kind of the key group of women helping us set the platforms and, and begin um, developing uh, the initial content. Uh, but we'll also have um, very senior women uh, what we're kind of calling the power circle. So very um, experienced, um, sage women, wisdom. Um, then we have our basic membership, which is really the professional, it's the emerging leader, and it's the student. And, and the real goal here is that we have women from all communities in all phases mm -hmm. of their life because it's about mm -hmm. rallying and bringing together diverse women and and harnessing that that power so that they can all reach mm -hmm. their potential so deb it mm -hmm. sounds like anyone can become a member yes um, absolutely as long as you're a woman as long yeah <laughs> as long as you yeah um age limits any of that kind no, of stuff absolutely so not. students and, everybody and, and, and the real beauty is as michelle talked a lot about access it's about giving young women mm -hmm. access to women who want to help them women who want to um, mm -hmm. sponsor want to pull them up so it's really trying to break through those barriers of our old definition of leadership and, and women not wanting to help women but this is really and that's grounded. so needed mm -hmm. so needed mm -hmm. Pam before we go I, I wonder is there a success story from the VX you know launched back in November mm -hmm. share a success story that's that's happened Absolutely. and, and the, to, to us the success is when we um, take something that's already been proven. Mm -hmm. uh, we're not here to put the VX stamp on something and say, ta-da, we did this. And so when we started talking about this a couple of years ago, the calls started coming in from around the country saying, oh, I've got something similar. Can you, you know, you should use it. We're taking pieces of all of those organizations and that's the platform we're creating. Mm -hmm. So we have organizations from Kansas and from Washington DC and from Phoenix and from Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And we're using, um, their material, sometimes their branding, and definitely their concept as we launch the VX. And, and then what we're providing is that, um, as Deb mentioned, we're providing the, the very strong call to action, the measurements, the accountability, the structure around sure. it. But I think the biggest success for us is that we are going to be able to say, here's mm -hmm. what started in this other state. Mm -hmm. and, and Michelle, I know you were part of that. Yeah, and I, I think that um, with that, that success is before we even really launched and we began to really talk about it, women came forward and said, here's our, here's our contribution, here's our dollar, right? And not afraid to write that check, not, a, not just $1,000, but, you know, whatever they had, 50000 you know. We want to be a part of this. How can we make this move, movement happen? That was success to us. I think that continued to re re-energize um, us to say this is really not about us just getting together for a cup of coffee. This is not just about us really making sure that every woman is represented here um, in, in our leadership positions, but it's about us making sure that we have a voice, a uni united voice to really move the country forward. Michelle, um, how can listeners learn more about the VX? Again, we'd love for you to, to join as a member and go to thevx.com um, and, and, and see what we're all about. Ladies, thank you so much mm -hmm. for being here. I, I can't absolutely. thank you enough. Um, the work you do is absolutely amazing. You're inspiring, mm -hmm. you're creating mm -hmm. a voice and a platform for young women um, to the most sage women in our community. 
an opportunity to begin to work together and collaborate mm -hmm. together. Mm -hmm. um, join us every Saturday at 10 a.m. for Driving Force Radio here on AM 710 KNUS. Thanks so much. Thank you for Thanks having for us. Having us.